Dubai, a city known for its towering skyscrapers, extravagant shopping malls, supercars patrolling the streets, and man-made islands. A city where millionaires and billionaires gather in world-class restaurants and stay at seven-star hotels. One of the best places on earth, a modern cultural utopia. A place where rich people with their multi-billion dollar businesses thrive. A city at the forefront of innovation and a place seemingly devoid of crime. This is how the leaders of the United Arab Emirates want you to see Dubai. But let's pull back the curtains and look beyond the glitzy exterior, beyond the image carefully curated by the rich and powerful. We'll delve into the untold stories, the aspects of Dubai that aren't shown in the glossy brochures and social media posts. Let's peel back the layers and uncover a different side of Dubai. One that challenges the idealised image and reveals the realities that coexist with the opulence. It's time to explore Dubai as it truly is, beyond the polished facade, and discover what lies beneath the surface. Everything from its massive carbon footprint to its enormous modern day slave force that consists of millions of immigrants. You see, Dubai is built in the middle of a desert and has the biggest carbon footprint per person in the entire world. It's about double the carbon footprint of an American. And just the air pollution alone has caused an estimated 900 deaths in 2023. This is because Dubai is built in a place that has virtually no rainfall. That means that they have to drink the sea, which requires massive desalination plants that make the water drinkable. That causes Dubai to have the most expensive water in the world, costing more than the production of petrol. This alone is a large contributor to its massive carbon footprint, alongside other ridiculous energy intensive structures like the ski resort in the middle of an otherwise barren and scorching wasteland. But their high carbon output and horrible air quality is a minuscule problem compared to the things we're about to uncover. Because of the city's enormous growth, their sewage system cannot keep up with the rate of expansion, resulting in toxic beaches that make tourists sick, leaving them with eye infections, ear infections and even vomiting after they enter the water. The tourists enjoying Dubai's beach have reported an odd smell and often get sick after entering the water. Guests even started to spot raw sewage, condoms and used toilet paper floating in the sea. This is because Dubai's sewage system largely doesn't exist, so trucks regularly have to empty the building's sewage and bring it to treating facilities outside the city. Often, the sewage doesn't get treated due to a lack of treatment facilities, and huge lines of disposal trucks end up having to wait in line for days. Workers end up opening the manholes intended for maintenance of the sewage lines and dump it in untreated. This way, the sewage directly enters the sea. And although the city's leader, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has claimed to have made a significant improvement to Dubai's sewage system, this is still a major problem. Sewage will still end up entering the waters and pollute the ocean, and you'd certainly not want to go swimming at the coast of Dubai. Dubai is also known for its megastructures and artificial islands, like the man-made Palm Islands or the World Islands, which started construction in 2003 and had to be halted due to financial issues in the 2008 financial crisis. And to this day, the World Islands only have one home built as a showcase for future property sales. It's also worth mentioning that Dubai can't use the desert sand to construct these islands because the grains are too big which means they have to use massive tankers to suck the sand from the ocean floor, destroying large amounts of coral reef and marine life in the process. And on top of that, these multi-billion dollar islands are sinking according to NASA's satellite images. The real estate company Nakil Properties, which is responsible for building them, has denied this claim due to a large part of the land already being sold. Their attempt at building wave breaks to counteract this issue has also failed, and rising sea levels contribute further to the islands becoming submerged in water. But this isn't the worst part. If you've wondered how the United Arab Emirates is able to build mega projects like the Burj Khalifa and have the world's biggest shopping mall alongside countless other mega structures, all while continuing to be one of the fastest growing cities in infrastructure development and urban expansion, located in the middle of a scorching desert, 
is because of their massive workforce consisting of immigrant workers that are underpaid and heavily overworked. You see, Dubai is built and maintained by slave workers, and this isn't even an exaggeration. More than 88% of the UAE's population are migrant workers, and about 42% of them are South Asian immigrants. These workers usually come from poor countries and are lured in by ads promising them a $300 monthly salary including food and accommodation in return for working 9 to 5. If this were the truth, they would be able to work their contract and bring all their money home to their families. But this couldn't be further from the truth. When workers land in Dubai and want to start working they are told that there is a policy which states that they have to hand over their passports. But they are told this is just a policy they have and that it's nothing to worry about. The manager told me, you know, the policy here is that uh, every employee leaves their passport with us. Don't worry, we have a safe, we keep all the passport there. You don't have to worry about anything, but that's part of our policy. They can simply get it back by asking whenever they have a vacation and want to leave the UAE for their time off. Once they start working, they find out how they were lied to and lured in. Working in Dubai is not a 9 to 5 job for poor immigrants. It's far from that. They will work for up to 14 hours a day for 6 or even 7 days a week. And when they do get a day off, the companies will usually plan meetings or other activities for them. Once they finish their work, you'd be mistaken to think that they are able to explore the city of Dubai and enjoy its nightclubs and tourist attractions. Once they leave their work, they get driven to their promised accommodation. But the housing promised to them is not in the city. The city is for the wealthy to enjoy, not for poor immigrant workers. The workers will get picked up by a bus or a driver that brings them to their accommodation, which is usually a half an hour drive away from the city in the middle of the desert. These communities are guarded and have fences around them and often the rooms are shared by multiple workers. And it was this accommodation that, to be honest, looked like a jail with security and the gates at the entrance. So you arrive there with a the minivan, you go back to your room, nothing to do. And when they get some holidays and ask for their passport so they can visit their family back home, they are told if they don't return after two weeks, their fellow co-workers would get punished for it by getting no salary for the whole month. I went to ask for my passport to go on holiday and here is the crazy thing because they sit me down and they put a paper in front of me, the HR department, and the HR manager told me, the policy here is like this, I can give you your passport, you can go on vacation, but in order to give you your passport, two of your co-workers, they have to sign and they will be responsible for your passport. So if you don't come back and you don't bring me back the passport, they will be in trouble and they will be responsible for it. But that's how workers of restaurants, hotels and similar jobs get treated, which is already a form of modern day slavery. But the ones struggling the most are the construction workers of Dubai, the ones responsible for building the megastructures and record breaking infrastructure. These workers usually come from Bangladesh, India and Pakistan. They get their passports confiscated right when they land in the United Arab Emirates. Unlike some of the hotel staff or restaurant workers that get their passports confiscated by the company, the construction workers don't even get accommodation and have to sleep at the construction sites working all year through, 7 days a week, for 14 hours or even more, while earning around $170 a month. Wages are often withheld for months to ensure they don't quit or try to escape. Many of these workers die from the heat and from being completely overworked, but the UAE makes sure to cover up all deaths to avoid sparking any controversy. What I just described is the definition of modern day slavery and it continues in Dubai to this day. It's hard to say how many people exactly work for the UAE, but it's estimated that there are around 3 million people being enslaved and I wouldn't be surprised if that number was way higher. I hope this can give you a new perspective of Dubai, the city that is often portrayed as utopia by wealthy people, claiming it has no crime when the biggest criminals are the leaders themselves. It sounds much more like a modern dystopia when you know what happens behind the scenes.